Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This patient is on Tamsulosin for prostate gland disease. And this patient had severe iris floppy syndrome. Let us see how I managed this case. After making the main incision, this is a side port on the left side of the main incision. Now I inject an air bubble to fill up the anterior chamber and there are five air bubbles. This is stripan blue dye applied over the anterior capsule and this is a bit of adrenaline. The dye is then washed out with PSS and then the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. We can see too much mobility of the iris. And now the size of the people is okay for making a, an optimum sized capsular axis and it is done. Now as I do hydro dissection, the iris tends to prolapse through the side pole, through the main wound. and as I inject visco the iris tends to come out I reposit the iris with a ball tipped instrument and now I introduce the try to introduce the tip of the fecco needle immediately iris prolapses through the main wound and there is the eyeball is hard immediately I decide to apply iris hooks so I ask for a lens stiff knife and make four step incision this is a stab incision at around 10 o'clock. This is another one at around 7 o'clock. This is a stab incision at around 2 o'clock. And this is one more stab incision at around 4 o'clock. So four stab incisions and now I start applying the iris hooks one by one. Now the rexis is made and I have to be very careful not to pull the rexis margin. So I see that I have retracted only the iris and I go in very carefully hold the iris don't go deep and see that I'm retracting only the iris this is the hook being applied at around 4 o'clock Again, I am very much careful to retract only the iris, not the rexus margin. Here I had some doubt and when I was sure then I advanced the silicon guard. And this is the hook at around 1.30 o'clock. Many colleagues apply a sub incisional, sub main incisional iris hook that is not necessary in this case. I never apply sub incisional iris hooks. 
the iris has been pulled in there will be no iris prolapse I depressed the nucleus and there was some trapped fluid behind the nucleus it came out and now I inject visco and now is the time to introduce the tip of the phaco needle the phaco needle goes bevel down never bevel up in such cases and gently it glides over the iris and now I start chopping the nucleus to make it into fragments to divide the nucleus into several fragments and after dividing the nucleus into several fragments I start emulsifying the nucleus this is an edited video the actual surgery took 17 minutes it has been edited to 12 and a half minutes and this is the other hemineucleus divided into two pieces and each fragment is emulsified with ultrasonic energy which is around 65% in this case fluorate being used is 40 ml per minute and vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury and this is the last piece at this time I decrease the vacuum to 250 floor rate is 25 and very gently very carefully the last piece of the nucleus is emulsified and now I remove the feco needle and inject a bit of visco and now is the time to clean the cortex this is our 23 gauze simco cannula cortex is removed and now I release the hooks to some extent and then remove the cortex which is sub-incisional by the Simco cannula itself. In this case I have only one side board to remove the cortex and now is the time to implant an intraocular lens I'm going to use visco first I fill off the antechamber and the capsular bag and before implanting the intraocular lens I remove one hook which is adjacent to the main incision so that the iris doesn't press so that the intraocular lens doesn't press over the iris so that the intraocular lens easily glides over the iris and goes into the capsular bag and here it goes the lens has gone very easily into the capsular bag the intraocular lens is dialed to place it nicely in the capsular bag and now 
I inject some more visco. My plan is to remove all the hooks at this time. So I take a Macpherson's forceps and a fixation forceps with the help of these two forceps I remove the hooks the silicon guard is retracted the hook is advanced the iris the pupillary margin is unhooked and it is pulled out and now is the time to remove the visco that has been used for implantation of the intraocular lens. In this case, since the iris is floppy, whenever I try to remove some visco and if there is some irrigation pressure, the iris tends to prolapse through the main wound. So, the ideal pupil expansion device in cases of severe eye phase is iris hooks. If we use a B hex ring, there is a possibility of disengagement of the ring at some steps of the surgery. And this is the final lavage of the interior chamber after closing the side port by hydrating corneal stroma. The interior chamber is nicely formed. Integrity of the wounds are checked. And then few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.